Practice Associates. Welcome, Dr. Hayslip. Okay. Tonight we're going to talk about diagnosis and treatment of sexually transmitted diseases. And when I see patients and have this talk, I tell them basically, if you're having sex activity with somebody, you're really trusting your life to them because there's a lot of diseases out there and it's not just uh, a little occurrence, it's a lot and it's never too late to talk to your kids about it. Yes, that's correct. Uh, sexually transmitted infections are very common. There's 20 million new cases each year in the United States of new infections with these. They affect men and women and you know all economic class classes and background levels. And there, there's different types of infections and they have different symptoms with, with men and women? That's correct. Um, and some have no symptoms, but um, certainly some of the symptoms could include uh, discharge or painful sores. Um, that you might want to get checked out from your doctor for. Now, you also can have some urinary tract symptoms? Sure, especially for women, or actually for men as well, some burning when you urinate, and that might be a sign that you might have an infection. Tell us about some different types of sexually transmitted diseases. Well, there are you know, quite a few um, different infections out there. Um, there's um, ones that, are, that we can test for in the office, um, there's gonorrhea and chlamydia, which we test for. There's also herpes, there's hepatitis, there's HIV and syphilis. And these diseases have consequences, not, I mean, we can cure a lot of them. We can't right. cure AIDS, we can control AIDS now, but there are some long-term consequences. That's true. Um, a big thing, again, is infertility. And so that's really important that um, certainly if there's a concern that come and get tested, but otherwise um, some of the infections can cause organ damage and even uh, cancer as well. Tell me about cancer and what's the, the concern there? Sure. Well, HPV virus is a, um, a virus that you get from sexual contact and um, it can lead to cervical cancer in women. So, you know, people say, well, I could catch this in a public restroom. That's, that's really just that's, impractical yeah. and, not, and not the case. So if you think you have something, you really ought to talk to your doctor about yes, it. Yes, certainly. Come, you would come to the doctor. We would do a physical exam. Um, sometimes we do a Q-tip type swab. We can even test through urine and blood as well. And another common misconception is a woman might come to the doctor just for their yearly pap smear, and they think that they're getting tested so that if there's a concern, they need to make sure that they mention it so that we would know to test for those things. And so if you're concerned, get tested, get right. treated talk to your partner? Correct, certainly. Um, certainly if you do have an STD, it, it's very important to tell your partner because some of the times, you know, if you get treated, well, you can get reinfected. So you want to make sure that your partner gets treated as well. And you want to make sure that the infection gets cleared. Correct, correct. Now, ways to prevent it. There are some some basic advice out there. Sure, certainly abstinence. You know, if you're not sexually active, you're not gonna get an infection. But otherwise, um, having protected sex with a condom is uh, very useful and very helpful. And then also other prevention, like we had mentioned that vaccine can help prevent it. And um, certainly there's also the vaccine for hepatitis B. And there's the, the, the Gardasil right. vaccine. How, is it a one dose, two dose? Is it for males, females? When do you start it? Sure. We typically started at your 11-year-old uh, well child checked, and it is both for men and or from actually for children and also uh, for boys and girls. Um, they just recently changed the dosing schedule where you just get two of the vaccines now versus the typical three. So if you think you might have a, uh, have a sexually transmitted disease, don't be shy about talking to your exactly. doctor about it. Make sure you get checked out and taken care of. That's yes, definitely good advice. All right, here's a summary why Health Talks brought to you by Baptist Health. Sexual transmitted disease, as the name implies, is a infectious illness or disease that is passed through sexual contact. The parents should start talking to their children about sexual activity around ages about nine to 10 or age appropriate, depending on your child's maturity level. The important thing is to be comfortable with it. I know it's a subject that we don't wanna talk about uh, either because of our own experiences at a young age or um, our own perceptions of our, our children's health in the future. But the main thing is that you want to, is to arm them with the knowledge of uh, sexual activity and the consequences of that. Recently, the CDC just put out statistics about the rise in chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis, the highest in 20 years that we've seen in this country. Also, uh, there have been drug resistance to these different sexual transmitted diseases. Putting those two together, it is gonna be a health issue, and so we have to talk about those things. There is a certain percentage of these diseases that can be asymptomatic, meaning no symptoms. Uh, 
asymptomatic infections are on the rise and also can lead to human papillomavirus, pelvic inflammatory disease, infertility, and ectopic pregnancy. So it can have devastating consequences for our future for our children. Currently, right now, there is a vaccine for HPV that is both indicated for boys and girls. It is a three-shot series. The earliest time that we start doing that is at nine years of age. I think one piece of advice that I would give to a parent talking to their child about sexual transmitted diseases and sex is it's a part of life. We're protecting them from the world from all these other things, but it's a hidden taboo to kind of talk about sex. So uh, get comfortable with it. Um, it's not as bad as you think. That could be a, a real bonding moment to know that I can talk to my dad or mom. And when you do that, the barriers come down, and I think that's, that's very important is to be comfortable with it.